Hey everyone, welcome back, and today let's not write some neat code because today we are going to be quickly running through the top five most common graph algorithms for coding interviews. So the number one most common graph algorithm, you may have expected this, is Depth First Search, DFS. Now the time complexity of this algorithm in most cases is going to be linear time. In other words, big O of n, where n is going to be the number of nodes inside of our graph. So if you're familiar with the graphs, you know that graphs are made up of nodes, which can contain values, and also edges, which connect the nodes together. If we have n nodes, then DFS runs in big O of n time. Now, what kind of data structures are needed for DFS? Well, if you are going to do this recursively, the only data structure you will most likely need is going to be a hash set. The hash set is specifically to basically detect a cycle because depth for search is about traversing a graph. So for example, if we start at this position, we want to traverse the graph. We go to the next node, we go to a, another node over here. Suppose these two nodes were connected, then we'd travel to this node, and then we'd get here, and then we'd travel back to this node, which would get us stuck into a cycle, right? Now, we don't want to stay stuck in this cycle forever, which is why hash sets are required in many cases for the DFS algorithm on a generic graph. If you are doing this recursively, you will not need a stack because the recursion handles that for you. But if you do not do this recursively, you can optionally decide to use a stack for DFS problems. Now let's suppose we were doing a DFS on this graph, let's say starting from A. Now obviously this looks exactly like a tree, and yes, it is a tree, but we know that trees are just special cases of graphs. So this is still a generic graph. Now if we were starting here at this A node and we were doing a DFS, what would be the output? Well, the output, we'd first process the first node, we'd get an A, then we'd go to the next node, right? Now DFS works basically going depth first. So, we, so it's depth first, so we, we do B now. Next, we go to C. You can see that this is definitely depth first. We're going as deep as we can in one direction, so we get to C now. Now we can't go any farther from C, left or right, so we go back up and we go to the next node that was available to us, the farthest down, depth first, right? D and now there's no more nodes anywhere left over here. So then we go to the next node that was available, which was E. We have done the entire graph and this is the output, A, B, C, D, E. Next, let's go to our second algorithm, BFS or breadth first search. And as the name implies, this is also a searching algorithm, which is basically designed to traverse a graph. Now this is gonna be slightly different than depth first search mainly in the order that it traverses the values, which is what we're going to see when I show you the output, how D BFS would traverse this graph. But the time complexity actually of this graph is going to be the same as DFS because we're going to visit each node at most once. So the time complexity is going to be big O of n, where n is the number of nodes in the graph. The data structures typically needed for this algorithm, and it's usually not implemented recursively, so it usually requires a queue data structure, a double-ended queue usually. Again, in, in our graph, we could have a cycle similar to the DFS case. So we don't want to get stuck in a loop where we go to one node, go to the next node, and then just stay stuck in there forever because we don't want to visit the same node twice. How can we avoid that? Same case, same way that we did in DFS, which is using a hash set to detect duplicate nodes. And BFS is kind of the opposite of DFS. So let's say we start at the same first node, right? We start at A, so let's add A to the output. Now, instead of going the farthest we can in one direction like we did before, like going to B and then going to C, let's do breadth first search, right? Breadth meaning everything that's close to us. Basically, we're going to do this layer first, right? We're going to we're gonna traverse this entire layer, and then we're going to traverse the next layer, and then keep doing that until we run out of layers to traverse. So let's go Let's first go to B. So B is going to be processed, adding it to the output. Then let's go to E, adding this to the output. And you can see that this is a different output than we had when we ran DFS. So this is a different ordering that we're going to traverse these nodes in. So we've done the second layer over here. Let's do the next layer over here. So we'll do C and then D. So let's add C and D to the output. And then you can see everything has been processed in the entire graph. We had a slightly different output than we did with the DFS case. 
So the third graph algorithm is definitely a little bit different. This is union find, which is used to kind of union together disjoint sets and kind of combine them together efficiently. So the overall time complexity of this algorithm is usually bounded by n log n. And in terms of data structures, what I'll say is just that it, it requires basically a forest of trees, which is really how I was taught how this is implemented. But basically, you usually have to implement union find yourself. The good thing is it's not super hard to implement it because, for example, one thing we could do with union find is basically what if we wanted to know the number of connected components of a graph and we were given five different nodes now of course in this case we have five connected components each of these is a component now but what if we start arbitrarily adding edges if i say okay i'm going to add an edge here i'm adding one edge well that decreased the number of components from five down to four now now we only have four what if i take another edge and increase it or add the edge over here now we have three different connected components what if i take another edge and add it over here well that didn't change anything we still have one two three connected components union find is basically an algorithm that can do stuff like this efficiently for us so suppose we added these three edges now we want to know how many connected components we have we have three connected components exactly three so three would be in the output now, this is a very high level overview. If you would like a more detailed explanation of the union find algorithm, I would recommend watching this video, which is actually number of connected components in an undirected graph, which we solved using union find. So the next algorithm on our list is definitely one of the more difficult ones and definitely more obscure. You don't see this algorithm used a lot, but it is topological sort. And this algorithm is actually built on top of one of the previous algorithms, DFS. You can see why DFS is so important because it's actually used in a lot of other algorithms, including topological sort. So topological sort basically at a high level is we are given a directed acyclical graph, basically a graph with directed edges and the graph will not have any cycles. Basically, the topological sort of a graph like this one would be reading the values of every single node in the graph, but only and basically printing those values out in such an order that, for example, D, when we print D, we have to make sure that every node that came before it has already been printed or processed or traversed or whatever you want to call it. So one valid topological sort would be A, B, C, D, and E. A topological sort doesn't have to be unique. There's actually two different topological sorts in this graph. We could do A, and then we could do B, and then C, or we could do C, and then do B. That's two different choices we have. But once we do those, then the choices are limited. Then we have two nodes left. We have to do D before we do E. So one topological sort could be A, B, C, D, E. This is where we are doing this with depth first search. So the overall time complexity is going to be big O of N. We are going to be using a hash set since we are doing DFS. But if we do it recursively, that should be the only data structure that we actually need. This was a very quick explanation of topological sort, but if you would like a more detailed solution and explanation, I would recommend watching this video, Alien Dictionary. We comprehensively explain topological sort and then solve a problem using topological sort. And the last algorithm I wanted to quickly go over is Jikstra's shortest path algorithm. This is definitely a popular famous algorithm and it does show up in leak code though it's not super common in leak code and in coding interviews, but it's definitely a good to know. You'll definitely learn this in school. Just like the name says, it's about finding the shortest path from one node. So let's say we had a starting node A. We want to find the shortest path from A to every single node in the graph A, B, C, D, E, right? We want to find the length of the shortest path. Now, the graphs we've been looking at so far have been pretty simple graphs, right? Each edge actually doesn't have any weight associated with it. Each edge basically has a weight of one, right? A simple weight because they're all equal. But we could actually have 
edges of different values. Suppose we had something like this. So this makes finding the shortest path a little bit more difficult because we actually have to look at the values of every single edge in the graph now. And the overall time complexity of Jixter's algorithm is actually more complex than a regular DFS. It's typically E log V, where V is the number of nodes or vertices in the graph. E is the number of edges in the graph. It's a little bit more complex. It's a little bit of a worse time complexity because we have to deal with these edges. Now, how are we going to deal with these edges? What data structure are we going to use? A heap or a priority queue, however you want to call it is usually the main data structure used to find the shortest path because we're going to have to be looking at the minimum edge and we're going to have to be looking at the minimum of many different values so the heap is going to be very helpful for doing that and you still don't want to you know get stuck in a cycle so hash sets are also helpful for this algorithm and just to give you a quick rundown of how this algorithm would work on this example, we'd start at A, we'd look at the shortest edge, it's one, so then we'd get to B. We'd say, you know, the length to get to B is just gonna be one. Then we'd look at the next two edges that are available to us. We'd choose the smaller one, this one, which would get us to C. So we'd say to get to C, it just takes a length of two, a weight of two. And then we'd look at our next uh, frontier. We could, we could choose the five or the two. Of course, we're going to choose the two. So then we'd say at this point, D, uh, the cost to get to D is actually four. We don't just include this single two, but we also include the previous two that it took. And then the last edge is E, or the last node is E. How long does it take to get to E? Basically, as far as it takes to get to D, which is four, plus this one. So E is five. So this is kind of the, uh, you know, the, the shortest paths to every single node in the out in the graph. And for a more in-depth look at Jixtra's algorithm, I recommend taking a look at this problem, network delay time. I have, I have a solution for this problem on my channel, and I think I go over the entire concept of Jixtra's algorithm in detail, and then we write out the code for that. But that has been the entire video. That's the top five most common algorithms in coding interviews. There are a couple more algorithms that I do want to mention, though. There's a couple more algorithms that do sometimes come up in interviews, but they're pretty rare. So the two are, I would recommend learning Prim's or Kruskal's algorithm for minimum spanning trees. Both of the algorithms are pretty comparable, so I would say you only really have to learn at least one of them. But if you want to learn both of them, they're pretty similar, so you can. And this is for minimum spanning trees. And there's another algorithm which is pretty similar to Jixtra's algorithm that can sometimes be useful in some difficult problems. And that is this Floyd Warshall's al algorithm. But this one is definitely pretty rare. I've actually never seen this come up in any coding interview of mine, and I've never heard of anybody getting this, but some sometimes it does happen. So if you really want to... But yeah, that has been the most common graph algorithms for coding interviews. I hope that this video was helpful helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe and consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel. I really appreciate all my Patreon supporters and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.